Hello folks and welcome to Four Season Backpacking. Please subscribe for the latest outdoor adventure videos. Hello folks, this is the last station on the uh, Brecon Beacons Railway and uh, it starts at Ponty Preed I think. Uh, this is like, a, this station is near the bit where you go up towards uh, Trifan um, on the Cambran Way. So if you're doing the Canberra Way in sections, if this railway was actually running, it would be really useful. But unfortunately, because the uh, situation in the world at the moment, like a lot of things, um, it's not running, unfortunately, which is a great shame. Wonder if this is open now. I doubt it. Never know, it might be open. Check on their website. So this is the uh, railway that I could have got to start the Cambran Way again. Um, I have no hope of it opening again this year. And I'm even doubtful about next year, the way how paranoid people are about what's going on in the world. Um, I think it's it's sad everyone's lost their businesses. The world's really gone to the bin really, isn't it? So I guess normally this train would be really busy and it would be taking people up who want to go to walk over uh, Pen Wai Fan. Um, it takes you up a lot nearer to the I guess the start point of the uh, track. It's a real shame, man. I mean, what the hell is happening, eh? It really is. Uh, it's just very frustrating what's happening. Um, it really is. Check that view out. Stunning. Sussex. Well, I kid you not, this is what I'm walking through at the moment. We're in tick territory and it is deep. Sinking grass. Oh, Jesus. Heading for those sheep on solid ground. Oh, it's just really, it doesn't look it, but you just don't know where you put your foot. Oh man, seriously, if I knew this was like this, I wouldn't have come this way. Oh, I've gone the wrong way, I think. Nightmare. I'm just wearing trail trainers. A nightmare. Oh, this bit's not too bad. Shit, I hope it's not more of this. Oh, Jesus, that looks deep. Oh, boy, don't even know what I'm stepping in here. What's this? Oh, that's fucking sinking sand, isn't it? God knows. I know if I should even walk through here. Oh, I just walked through all that shit. God, I hate that stuff. <laughs> That's worse than anything um, in Dartmoor, anyway, I've experienced. Uh, thankfully, I found a, a part, well, a route of some kind. Um, doesn't help the fact that I need to fill in in my uh, wisdom tooth before it pulled out. Absolute agony, and I don't suppose I'm going to be able to go to the dentist either, am I? So, it's kind of put a bit of a downer. I'm enjoying it, but the pain... I get painful teeth quite often. I suffer from pain quite a lot, uh, so it's nothing new. But I'd rather I didn't didn't have it. It is very painful. It's a type of pain you get when you feel you know you need a filling. I have that. I have that for months on end. Sometimes it's uh, 
look after your teeth folks so i just filtered uh some water didn't bother filming it that's where i came over from all that through those tussocks very horrible it was too so i thought i thought this stone would be a bit more impressive this is my uh autumn solstice uh ancient site i think it's ancient it's an inscribed stone on the map but yeah there's something very faded on the side i don't know if it's ancient or hundreds of years old could be a land marker it's old might not be thousands of years old interesting yeah it's got like notches in it anybody know what this could have been Okay, I got. Um, I found a place to camp, as you would have seen on the time lapse. Um, I'm just um, going to make myself a chicken fajita with rice, something to eat. Um, hiking, camping foods. You just got to rehydrate them with the boiling water. Have you seen them in my videos enough times? If you've been watching my videos, um, I have a link in the description for this. This is really nice, I love this one. Highly recommended. This is what it looks like inside before it's been rehydrated and it smells really nice even before it's been rehydrated. I love this one. Re can't highly recommend this uh, chicken pajito with rice, uh, something to eat enough. Okay, so that is my pouring the water into my Camping food. I think that's just enough. Yeah, it looks just enough. That's what it looks like with the water in. I'm just going to reseal it. Tell you what, I've had this MSR uh, windshield for years now, and it has lasted for ages. And I've, it's only just as started developing a kind of like rip. In it um it looks like it's going to be need to be replaced this isn't going to last much longer now but um it's lasted a long time i think it was only about probably about 20 quid you can make one yourself really couldn't you okay i'm really peckish so i'm gonna have another something to eat by adventure foods which i had in the last episode um <laughs> i actually bought four packets of these with me so these are the cheaper of the dehydrated foods I've got, Adventure Foods. This one's really nice actually, minced beef hot pot. I'll put the link in the description for this and all the other foods I take with me on the hikes. Morning guys, I really enjoyed my Adventure Foods last night and the um, chicken vegeta with rice I enjoyed uh, in the, the um, was that in, in the morning I guess and um of yes uh, last episode and um this is what i'm gonna have now a chicken tikka with rice and i've just got some water on the boil now ready going and as you will hear it is actually raining so this is inside my uh jack wolfskin tent and the reason why i chose this tent uh, this time round is because um, the weather here in this this bit of the beacons can be um, really really windy, very wet like it is now. It's not windy though, and this tank can handle the wind. Re incredibly he heavy rain. I've actually had the Jack Wolfskin tent in a uh, Thailand. I think it was near the wet season. I was camping up in Chiang Mai. I don't know if they. Well, it was like a full-on electric storm lightning every few seconds it seemed and um, seriously heavy rain like you know in a tropical storm the rain is so heavy I've also had it in heavy rain here and big storms and I've never had a problem with it, it it's 
It's built like a tank, basically, as I always say. I'll put a link in the description for this tent. It's a very good value for money. I think it's about, with all the pegs, everything it comes with, I think it's 1.8 ki kilograms. 1.8 kilograms, yeah, that's right. So, I'm having a different coffee bag this morning. Uh, a Taylor's coffee bag, uh, roast four, quite, str well, strong coffee, definitely stronger coffee than the last one. I do prefer the other coffee I had in the last episode, but this is okay. Um, it's a stronger coffee, so that's just what I need in the morning. Anyway, I could put a link in the description for these ones as well. Well, this is what it looks like in the food package before the water's been added. Remember to remove the silicon, which I forget sometimes. Mm, this is really good. I'll put a link in the description for this. Well, it's not the uh, bright, sunny morning I was expecting today. I'm camped right by a quarry. Below is, I think it's called Ponty Preed, the start of the uh, uh, Brecon Beacons Railway, Steam Railway. And not long after that is Murphy Tidwell, which is where I'm getting the train as I'm heading back today. There's a quarry. Got some uh, horses, I think, where they ponies. That's quite a few about what I thought I could hear noises in the night. So there's the tent. The Jack Wall skin. Fantastic tent, guys. Really good tent. Stands up well in wind. Absolutely fantastic in uh, rain. It's ideal for the beacons. Um, I even use this in winter sometimes. Um, it's got a sort of bathtub inner, so you're not going to get any snow on you if it does snow. It comes up right here, the inner, the bathtub, see? Which is really good and good for when it's raining. This bar, I believe the bathtub bottom is 10,000 and the uh, waterproof and the uh, top is 5,000. So I believe, I'll, put it, I'll correct that on the screen if I'm wrong, but it's incredibly waterproof. Alright guys, no trace left as you see, this is where I was camping last night. Um, and here is my rubbish bag here, all the rubbish connected to my bag, I'll bin that in the nearest bin. And I've also picked up other people's rubbish where I camped last night, there wasn't any rubbish here to pick up, but my last camping spot. Um, I picked up in the actually in the morning. I picked up all, all the rubbish around there, so I have got good size, over, well over a kilo's worth of rubbish, maybe two kilos worth of rubbish. I was hoping to get some droning done this morning, but clearly not so much the wind, there's not much wind, it's the rain. Well, you probably can't sit much. Nice. Bit misty. Ponty Preed, I believe it is, in front of me. Uh, it's by a. I it's a man made reservoir. Uh, but it's man well, it's got a dam, so it's obviously man made to a certain extent. Maybe they made the uh, lake bigger, or it's totally man made. Who knows? Who cares? Uh, so, yeah, the start of the Brecon Beacon Railway down here, I believe. Which is not running at the moment, which is. 
Fuck. Oh, yeah. Well, what's going on in the world, eh? Such a shame that it's not running at the moment. <sighs> all the all the job losses and everything's just gone to hell, isn't it? It's a real big shame, really. It's quite nice down here. Not too steep for a change. <laughs> well, it's a very uh, slippy path. It's not steep, but very slippy. Should get the walking stick out, really, shouldn't I? I've got it with me. I well, used it once, so that was a bit of a waste bringing it. Yeah, Ponty Seal, that's what it's called. Oh, check out that landslide. Must come onto this road here. Also get a lot of rain. Okay guys, I found a bin just before the town, so get rid of my rubbish from the hike and other people's rubbish I found in the Brecon Beacons National Park, but people haven't picked up by where I was camping last time, so yeah, this is uh, this is hiking rubbish. There's a lot of it, but it's not just mine, remember? So I'm doing, the, well, I'm doing my bit for the uh, National Park here because I get some out of the National Park. I did my camping, my hiking there. So I'm uh, repaying by picking up people's rubbish, what they've accidentally dropped or just too lazy to take with them or just ignorant or whatever. I'm, um, I'm sorting that problem out rather than moaning about it. Positive action. To be honest, I'll probably put this whole, this whole bag in there because it's a pretty manky bag now. It's served its purpose. So let's get rid of the bag as well. Job done. So I could go to Murpha. Um that way is for, I don't know if it's in miles or kilometers, it doesn't say. I've really no idea because people still do use miles here and people use kilometers at the same time. So I wish I'd put kilometers if it meant kilometers or miles. <laughs> I just noticed this bottle, right? This bottle was just left there and there's a bin just over there. How crazy is that? That's pretty mad. Can't see any other rubbish. If there is any other rubbish here, I'll put it in the bin because there's a bin right here. I'm not sure what that is. I think it's um, the local Welsh politic, um, political party. Uh, and it's sort of nationalist party. Could be wrong. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't mean to offend anybody. Just thought I'd film it anyway. They're quite interesting now on the stone. So this must be where they keep the locomotives for the uh, Brecon Beacons uh, steam railway. As I said, you know, it's not in use at the moment. Ah, if only I could have got... Well, if I... When I uh, start this again, if this is running, I can get the train up there. Otherwise, I'll have to walk the whole way. So, yeah. Hopefully you're open soon, guys. It's a shame you closed. So yeah, it's actually also the very first station on the Brecon Beacons Railway heading up into the mountains. There's a car park for the Brecon Beacons Railway looking rather empty because it's closed. And a sign. I won't bother walking up there. But there's like an air shaft there, so there must be some kind of tunnel under here. I don't know if there's a railway tunnel under here. Or a mine, I'm not sure what this air shaft is for, does anyone know? I bet this car park's normally full this time of year. Even with weather like this. It's quite sad to see really, isn't it? And a lot of people moan about tourism, but it does bring a lot of uh, the economy and yeah, wealth to the area, doesn't it? people rely on it. I mean, I'm a tourist, aren't I? You know, people say, oh, I'm not a tourist, I'm a backpacker or a hiker, but really you are. It's like tourism's not a four-letter word, is it? And what this uh, air shaft is about, it's got one right by the uh, station as well. It's 
so that's close yeah what this is about if you want to pause it and read it I don't think I just went on that trail I went on um, the road well, I'm guessing this is the cemetery for Murpha and the surrounding area it's pretty big it's beautiful actually it's like a Scottish cemetery it is in Wales That sounds very really tempting. Probably not open though. Might be. Well, I'm pretty much entering Murph at the um, estates of Murph now, the suburbs. Murph of Tidville, one and a half miles. I'm guessing that's in miles because it's a road sign. Mostly road signs will be in miles. I've seen footpath signs usually in kilometres these days. So, so guys, I made the bad mistake of taking my waterproofs off. Now it's hammering it down. I'm going to get one over. Yeah, can't be bothered to put them back on. I'm like, not that. I'm about a mile and a half from the train station. Hopefully, my things in my bag stay dry. I've got my camera in a plastic bag, and it's it's a uh, case, so it should be all right. Yeah, for, for people who have never been to uh, uh, for Tidville, there's a big Tesco's right by the sta station. So if you arrive here to go to the Brecon Beacon soon and you haven't got all your supplies for food and stuff, you know, there's Tesco's extra right by the station. Don't know what that's all about. Some property for sale in Murphy Tidville there, if you fancy living here. I have to say, I do, I do like Murtha, I like the look of it. So, still walking through uh, Murtha suburbs, uh, heading towards the um, town centre. Uh, right, if I've got time, I'm going to go in uh, Tesco. If not, I'm just going to get straight on the train. But I could do with, well, I've, got, I've got a bottle of water in my bag anyway, so it's not like I'm going to go thirsty. Wow, look at this old building.
barcode. <laughs> Interesting name. I don't know who this guy is. I don't know. <laughs> Pound stop. <laughs> Getting closer to the train station now. It's quite early. I think it's like nine o'clock, so it's not many people about. And the weather's shit. Walking through the uh, shopping centre. It comes out to the train station and um, <laughs> Tesco's. Okay, so this is the uh, train station. There's a train at 10.15, so we're like 10 minutes. There's no point going to Tesco's really. Thanks for watching folks, I hope everyone is physically and mentally well. Let's hope all these restrictions are over soon and global travel can make a massive return.